All right, hey party people, welcome to the Illustration Masterclass. For today we have a special episode where we are highlighting the fall 2021 brushes for Photoshop and for Adobe Fresco. Glad you're all here. And uh, remember, I'm following the chat over on Behance, be.net slash live. So if you have any questions about the brushes, please head over to Behance, behance.net slash live or be.net slash live. We can talk about this brush set, this latest brush set for fall 2021 for uh, everybody. I'm going to uh, check in and say hi to some folks who are joining me right now. And uh, let's see, we have Wade and Chris and Tim and Mercurial and Randall and Christoire and Biola, Fabio and uh, Zubair and Andre. What's up everybody, how you doing? Um, just gonna refresh here. It looks like the chat is not showing me the Behance stream, although uh, YouTube says we're fine at the moment. Um, let me just double check on that. Been having some weird networking issues, but looks like the stream is in excellent shape. So why don't we carry on? Okay, so what we're gonna be doing today is, I'll just uh, pop on over here to Photoshop, is I'm just gonna be making an illustration because it's Halloween, it's, you know, I mean, I'm, I know I'm ahead of the game. It's early October, but still, the whole month of October is just fun to think about monsters and scary stuff. So I thought I'd do kind of like a vampire-y sort of a thing with uh, these new brushes. Um, I'm gonna start with this gray background here. What I wanna do is just build up a whole bunch of texture uh, and show you what you can do with some of the larger brushes in the set. Um, if you haven't yet downloaded these brushes, um, I'll give you a couple things, well, pointers. One, number one, if you're in North America, the brushes are live right this moment. Um, and the way you uh, get them in Photoshop is you head on over to uh, this little drop-down menu in the top right corner of your Photoshop brushes panel and you come on down to where it says get more brushes. You tap on that, you sign in with your Adobe ID and voila, you are on the brush download page where you'll find all the goodies, okay? So you just look for the fall 2021 update. It should be right there at the top of the page. Um, if you're using Adobe Fresco, you will open your brushes panel and scroll down to the bottom of the brushes panel where you see the option uh, to add a little plus sign. There's a, um, there's a little plus sign down there. You tap on the plus sign, and there they have the option to import brushes, but they also have the option to explore. Tap on that, you can follow different libraries, one of which will be the fall 2021 brushes. Um, if you are living outside of North America, a couple things. One, the brushes will be live um, automatically within about a week or two. But if you wanna jump the gun in some countries, not all, um, in some regions rather, you can actually go to download the brushes uh, from the brushes download page and when you sign in, you go to the bottom of the page and you change the region from wherever you live to United States. And this sometimes tricks the website into giving you access to that download. So you can give that a try. It doesn't work for everybody, but works for some. Okay. Um, like Creole Stoire says, he got them in, uh, in Ireland. So, hey, awesome. And I've, I've met some folks in France and Germany who were able to get them. So this works for some folks and it is, I mean, the brushes are being rolled out as we speak, but I wanted to go ahead and highlight them now and uh, do a little demonstration for you. Okay. All right. Kathleen, hey, how you doing? Nice of you to join us. Thanks everybody for being here. All right, why don't we get cracking? So i um, got the brush set open here and uh, I'm gonna start with this double edge brush. Now what I've done is I've filled my canvas with just a neutral uh, gray color here. Probably what I'm going to do for this illustration is keep everything um, in grayscale for the moment. We'll see how I go. Um, and one of the nice things is, uh, depending on the speed of your machine, okay, and the processing power you have, the graphics card, and so on, um, I'm working at 1800 pixels square right here. This is the size of this brush, this double edge brush, um, normally. It's a 300 pixel brush. Um, but what I like to do is I like to try and push, whoops, try and push the limits and see how big can I go. Um, and so I'm going to just make it. 800 pixels and then do this. So I'm gonna make a few marks on the canvas right there. And then I'm gonna grab this smooth hatch brush and do the same thing. I'm gonna pop it up to, um, let's see, yeah, another 800 pixels. Now this brush you see has this cool cross hatch kind of texture that is baked in, okay? And I'm going to, as I do this, sample from the, ca uh, the canvas for lighter colors, bring those on top go back to dark and just kind of go back and forth with this brush, putting some random marks in there just to get things cooking, okay? There we go. Now, if you have trouble with the brush being that large, hey, you know, I'm sorry, it just, it all depends on the, the machine you're working on. Um, I'm using a three-year-old MacBook Pro here. 
So it's not the newest and latest and greatest or anything like that, and the brushes are okay to, to handle something like this. Um, all right, so there's a little start for myself. I'm going to now come on down to the uh, Boxit brush right here. This Boxit brush is one of my favorites. I'll just put it on white for a moment so you can see what it does. Paints these boxes that have a texture to them. See that? All different sizes and, and whatnot. But one of the cool things, I'll teach you a little trick with this brush, and you can do this with a lot of brushes. Play around with the flow and see what happens. I'm gonna knock this flow down really low. So we're gonna like 30%. And look what that does. Now, I'm getting some of those boxes, but some of those shapes are incomplete. See that? So it gives me this option to start building up little sections like this. And you never know what you're gonna get. It's totally random, all right? So you can pop that flow back up to 100 and play around with what's there. Might even go full on with black, okay? Then knock it back to a gray again, like this. You're just, just building up a surface here to work with, okay? So a couple little boxy bits just to have them, they'll, they'll peek through later. You know, we'll see how much of this winds up showing through in the final. Then you go over to the circles brush here, right, right above it, and make it really big. And just do more of the same. Look at that. Paints these really nice sort of, I would say like when you put your coffee cup down repeatedly on a surface and you get those little rings that show up, right? This will give you some of that action, okay? But it also give you an incomplete version of that half the time when you knock it down onto the canvas and that just creates some pretty cool unexpected patterns and whatnot. Okay, and the same goes for this, this Ripolo brush, okay? See that? Make that one really big and just throw a few little marks in there. So again, I'm just building some kind of interesting background for me here just to play with. I'll knock the opacity, uh, I'm rather the flow down again for this, um, this box it brush, throw a few more little boxy bits in there so things don't get too repetitive with that round look of the, uh, the Ripolo and the circles brush, okay? And now I'm going to start painting over all this with our uh, Pigmentia edge brush. All right, so grab a little darker color here, make that a little bigger, and just start pulling some larger strokes here or there. It's gonna knock some of the uh, contrast down for this background. And then I'll grab a lighter color, and some areas I'll just have a little lighter color showing through. This is bare, I think that's where I'm gonna have my subject right here, my my vampire, okay? So just kind of lighten that area up a little bit. All right, now what I don't wanna do is make it too specific or anything just yet, okay? So some of these values, you know, I'm just gonna take some, some lighter values in here because I know I'm gonna lighten things up in this area later. Um, but what I wanna show you now is this wonderful brush called Ratchet. Love this brush. So the Ratchet brush adds this, and I'll just put it on the, on the light area, you can see what it does. See that? It's just, just a weird set of patterns, but also has this kind of gritty spatter that gets thrown down every now and again. It's just so random. So I'm gonna use that here in the background, a couple of spots, just to see what it does. A couple of spots over here as well, just to throw a bit of texture down. Excellent. And if I zoom in now, Okay, and just pan around the canvas. I want you to see what we got going on. Look at all these random, wonderful little bits of darks and lights. Okay, little shapes here and there. Um, gritty and just very natural, you know? It's like if you just took a bunch of uh, paint and dry media and some graphite dust and some spatter and um, maybe some tools that you could scrape paint away with and just did a whole bunch of things all on the surface. You're building up an interesting surface for yourselves. And this is just a fun way to get things started with an illustration, I think. Um, all right, so any questions? Let's see here. I'm gonna just scroll through the chat for just a moment. When will they be available in Europe, says Laura. Well, like I said, up front, you can actually kind of trick uh, the Photoshop brush page, um, which Wade has linked to very kindly. Thank you very much, Wade. Uh, scroll up in the chat if you missed that link. Um, you can trick it by going down to the bottom of the page and changing the region of the page to United States. That works sometimes. If it doesn't work for you, don't worry. These will be live worldwide within two weeks at the, at the most, okay? Uh, Lizette says that this trick worked 
for her in the Netherlands, so that's awesome. Um, all right, any other questions? Sweet, Laura says it worked. Okay, good. Sorry, I was too far up in the chat there. <laughs> Inky just dropped into your favorites folder. Yeah, Inky's a good one. We'll use that a little later, I think. Um, hey, Chris, thanks for joining us. Uh, Hussam, you're based in Sweden and you were able to download it. Sweet, excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, Tim worked for you as well. Oh, great. Okay. All right, so um, let's just keep moving on here. I'm going to uh, now use white and come back to that Pigmentia brush. There we go. So we have the Pigmentia Edge brush, which has a wet edge feature to it. Um, and then we have the Pigmentia brush, which has a very different quality. Um, it's the same It's the same basic shape, but it paints differently. So I'm going to throw in some lighter stuff here now and start to think about uh, the shape of this, this character here. So the lighter I go, the lighter the amount of pressure is I use, the more of this sort of spatter I get inside um, the brush strokes that I'm making. You probably see that very clearly, right? I'll make my brush a little smaller and just come out here and suggest some, some ears. There we go. And have the head kind of tilted up and a little bit to the, to the left, our left. Okay, so that means you're gonna have one eye socket here and the nose right there and then the other eye socket right there. That's sort of the angle I think I'm gonna go for here. And uh, there's that shadow under the lower lip. We'll refine all that later, but right now just trying to block it in, you know what I mean? Just blocking it in, blocking it in. Alrighty. Forgive me if I'm a little quiet right now, but I'm just sort of thinking about what I'm doing with this. And I think we might have our our eyes looking right at the viewer like this. Something like that. And uh, don't want to get too specific with it just yet, but while I've got this this nice big brush can't hurt to just kind of model things a little bit, you know? Maybe let that shadow kind of recede into the the background there a little bit. Haven't yet decided really kind of how to pose the neck. Um, but you can see it's sort of taking shape there, right? What we're doing with this uh, little illustration here. And I really now was just kind of stuck with one brush for a bit. And of course that always winds up happening. You know, when I started to get into one little area where I want to get more specific, um, but I could switch it up and go to something like the smooth hatch brush and do more of the same just to get a different sort of effect, right? with the quality of the the edge, right? It's gonna bring in it's gonna bring in that that nice hatch kind of pattern there. Right? Sliman says, looks like I'm drawing you. Uh -huh. I don't know what you look like, but um, if you look like this guy, cool. 
Uh, let's see here. Can we still download the brushes with trial version? I don't know about that question. Sorry. Maybe. Kyle, can you tell us how you come up with your brush names? Oh, I don't know. Um, they just come to me. I just, I sit there and I look at it and I go, bleh. It just kind of, it's a really organic, um, kind of spur of the moment, spontane spontaneous thing. Unless I'm thinking about designing a specific kind of tool that, um, emulates a certain kind of natural media. In that case, you know, I'm actually thinking, oh, this is a kind of pencil or this is a brush that's meant to sort of look like what gouache looks like, you know, and then I use words that are a bit more, uh, you know, logical or, um, yeah, suited to that medium. Uh, hello from Portugal, Nuno. Thank you for joining us. Um, Hussam says, you tried to download the Halloween brushes from Creative Cloud. But the message said, this page isn't available right now? That's weird. Um, gosh, those should be available at all times. Can you... Huh. I don't know why that is. Um, tell us where you live, and maybe I wonder if there would be some kind of weird block where you live. Um, Laura is helping you out there in the chat. All right, so... Moving on, moving on, moving on. So I'm still playing now. I've switched it up to this um, this hatch brush, right? This smooth hatch. You can see what that's doing right there. So maybe our, our vampire friend here is looking at us while in the background we're going to have some detail so we'll go ahead and grab a lighter color and uh, let's go back to that that pigmentia brush for a minute and let's just push push a little hole back here behind him Suggest a little roof there. And then it'd be nice to have, I did this uh, earlier when I was thinking about this this illustration, I thought it'd be cool to have a, a church, kind of a steeple sort of thing in the, in the distance. You know, like an old, I think like an old European town, old uh, maybe Eastern, Eastern European town with a steeple in the back. Keep this diagonal thing going. I like this diagonal energy we have moving us from here to here. You know what I mean? Um, wondering if I need to balance it more by having something else like light down here, but not sure yet. We'll see. Uh, another thing you could do, and this is why I love Photoshop, is, you know, you could do this. <laughs> ah, isn't that nice? And I could just come in here and like start playing with this whole area and just kind of figure out what I want to do with that. Might just have some roof right there, some rooftop or something. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's okay, maybe not. Um, yeah, I'm starting to think now a lot more about the composition and, you know, whether or not it's working for me. Um, probably what I want to do is come down the lighter color here so that we don't feel like this is the same as that, right?
Maybe this whole area is like, maybe he's standing in front of the edge of a building and part of him is sort of peeking out. And then in the background, we have this steeple right here, you know? I love being able to do this. Look at this, just, just move stuff, who cares, right? That's the beauty of working in a digital environment. I can just take something, move it, transform it. Come back in and grab some color, paint some more in there, and then I can just grab that uh, ratchet brush. Remember that, fella? Come on up here and grab that ratchet brush. Add some more of that nice spatter and, and texture and whatnot. And then I'll come and work on that silhouette of that, uh, of that church in a moment. But maybe I wanna also just build up a bit more texture there. Yeah, I like this better now. Um, I like that we have a light area coming in here and then connecting to um, the head of our of our guy. In fact, I just kind of want to like soften that edge right there and have it just become sort of part of the background there. See what I mean? It's fun to play with your edges sometimes and see what you can do to make things a little bit more interesting, bit more interesting. Not so samey, right? Nobody wants the samey stuff. Nobody wants the samey. Maybe this whole area of his, of his head is sort of gonna get like lost in the shadow a bit, you know? So I'll push that darker. So we're getting that, we're getting the light coming around that way. And then we got the dark. Turn from the light to the dark. Right there. See what I mean? I think that's cool. We can really punch up that eye socket right there. Can you all hear that sound, by the way? The, the sound that my, <laughs> my uh, Wacom tablet makes when I'm painting. It's really loud because I use a felt nib and I anyone who's watched the show before knows I'm always talking about this. I have those sort of glow right out at us. All right. Um, question. By rotating the stylus pen you use for drawing for Kelly's asking, um, how are you changing the direction of the brush? Yes, yeah, so depends on the brush. Some of my brushes react to uh, tilt, pen tilt. So the angle at which you're tilting or, or turning your wrist, and that'll, that'll change the orientation of the brush stamp. Others um, will respond to the direction you're moving and automatically rotate the stamp to correspond to that. Okay, so that, that's another thing that happens. It depends on the brush. It depends on the brush. So they are, they are not all the same, they're all different. The way you know which one does what is by looking at the, um, the brush settings. You come over here and you go to shape dynamics and you say, look, under angle, 
Okay, it says angle jitter, which I know it should say angle and then angle jitter. That's a little bit of a problem. But anyway, under control, we have direction at the moment. That means that the direction I move, the stamp will automatically orient itself to that direction, okay? If I were to change that to pen tilt, that would not be the case. I would be able to control the direction with um, the rotation of my wrist, the tilt of the pen, so to speak, okay? So that's what that's all about. All righty. Okay, 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 okay. So, um, I thought I'd give them a kind of like a a nice sharp shape for a coat, you know? Like he's, he's got some coat. That he's wearing. I thought that'd be kind of a nice touch. So I'm gonna go a little lighter here, so maybe we get some of that atmospheric perspective going on where things are a little lighter. Right there, and then they you know they they gradually get slightly darker as we better define. Um, the form of that uh, that church, which I want to I want to make that look a little more um, clear. I want to clear that up. So I think we'll do that with um, that hatch brush. Let's go up to that guy. Um, smooth hatch. Ta da! Dee -dee. So let's do this. We're gonna. Just sort of figure out what that shape's gonna be. So do I want a big tall steeple or do I want sort of a chunkier fat steeple? Um, let's see what happens if I do this. If I come down all the way down like that, that could give me some room up here maybe to play with some sky. Maybe do some cool like sky effects like spooky clouds and, and things like that, you know? I don't know, that might be a cool thing to do there. I'm just gonna soften this edge just a hair. So we know that he's there's something behind him, but I don't I wanna kinda push it back into the distance just a, a bit. You know, it's a little bit too sharp. Um but his silhouette needs to be needs to be sharp. And you know you can always do this. You can come in, if you want to get really specific, you can do something like this. You can yeah, use this lasso tool. Say so I'm gonna do this. Ba bum, ba bum, ba bum, ba bum. And then I can just like grab that whole area, grab this this color, and then do something like grab that ratchet brush, for example, and just paint right up against the edge. See what I mean? And when I let go, see how sharp that edge is. So that might be a way to go. Um, and while I've got it, I can I can invert that selection, Command Shift I, grab this lighter color here, and just add more contrast right there for that ear, you know. And I might just leave it like that, or you know, I might I might go ahead and grab a brush again like that um, that double edge, and just come in. I know it's a big brush, so I'm gonna. Go ahead and do that like use a lasso tool to be more specific and then i could go to something like this concept pencil soft brush grab that lighter color and just hit that hit that edge where i want it okay i hope these tricks are useful for you all you know, if I really want to get specific, I can do that with this brush. I can come in. I haven't really used actual white. So that's, see this? You can, you don't realize how light things are until you go for actually using white. So by doing that, I can see, oh yeah, look at, look at how much lighter I can actually get here if I want to, right? and how much darker I can get, you know? It's cool to, to 
play with the full range of, um, of values that you have, right? Um, but I like to sort of like save that until a little later so I can I can sort of discover it almost. It's like, oh dang, I didn't know I could go that light, you know? Like I didn't realize I could I thought I was already at the lightest um, value possible there. But I wasn't, you know, so now I've got way more contrast, way more contrast there, way more contrast. See what I mean? Pretty cool to be able to to do that later on in the game. Um, going back to that ratchet brush, and I'm gonna just add a bit more of that spattery stuff here and there. Uh-oh, look folks, I got the spinning wheel of death. I took a screenshot just in case. Photoshop might not like me. I've been using Photoshop since 8 a.m. this morning. I haven't uh, closed it and I've been using a ton of brushes and just doing a whole bunch of project work. I might have exhausted the poor baby. Let's see what happens here. In the meantime, I'll check the chat, see if we have any questions. Uh... Yes, Abu Taleb, you can absolutely import these brushes in Fresco, 100%. Um, Vanessa's asking about a Wacom stylus that can do all these things. Every Wacom device that you can buy now does this. In the, in the old days, there were some Wacom devices that didn't recognize pen tilt and um, yeah, that was not uh, great, but as far as I know, they all do now. Kathleen says, do you generally work on one layer most of the time? Um, I don't know. It depends. I do it a lot, actually, um, just because I like to do that. But, you know, if I'm doing client work or something or uh, certain kinds of projects I work on, maybe like 80 layers. It, it really just depends on what I'm doing. Um, Randall's wishing they had the cheekbones of this person. <laughs> All right, I'm going to quit Photoshop and then we'll see if it's saved some of my progress. Let's see what happens. Hopefully, we'll see. All right, I'm gonna not report it right now because I don't want to bother or take the time to do that. We'll reopen it and we'll see how much of that file is still preserved. Okay, uh, meantime, Oh, wow, that's really kind of you, Laura, thanks. Um, maybe you can add red shapes to where the vampire is looking. He's looking at us. Um, can you show us your Wacom tablet, like, to see how much scratch it? It's not scratched at all, as far as I can tell, or if it is, it doesn't bother me. Um, I use a Cintiq, and yeah. Um, been using this thing for oh, six, seven years, probably. I've never had a Wacom device, ever. Uh, failing, not once. Never had one break. So that's a pretty good record, I'd say. Um, so this is where we are. Um, of course, I, I did add some stuff since this point, but at least I was able to recover some of it. Let's go back to those fall 2021 brushes. So I'm glad it was able to recover some of it. Not all of it, but some of it. And I'll take some over, you know, none for sure. For sure. It's never nice when things crash, but, uh, you know, it doesn't happen that often, so I'm okay with it. 
it's not a big deal. Um, so let's do that thing we always do. We flip it, flip it. And we say, okay, how screwed up is this thing? How messed up is it? What did I do wrong? Ha ha ha. That's always a good exercise. You know, you can just sort of figure out what needs to be done to make it a bit better. That's always a good exercise. Um, I'm realizing how boring it is to have that come straight across, so I'm going to just change that angle. Let's go ahead and uh, grab a brush that has a harder edge. So we'll use this Pigmentia again. Like that. Make it bigger and then just hit some of this stuff for some texture. Some nice goodness, texture goodness right there. Just want to modify the shape of this guy's head right there. So I'm going to pop that out a bit more. And just round out as we come back this way and then sort of knock it back again. Just want to suggest how that continues off on the side there. And I kind of want to just grab all these dark shapes, maybe make them one one big solid connected shape, if you know what I mean, right? So this all comes together here and we just keep going with it until, with the one lone exception being this, this eye socket, which just sort of sits there on its own. I think that's totally fine. Doesn't bother me. So we still didn't go to full white. We did that earlier before the crash, so I might, Try that in a minute. But one thing I was gonna do, again, was sort of try and figure out what's going on with the architecture back here. I don't, I don't want it to be so vague that we just have no clue what we're looking at, okay? Another thing is I don't want this, this split here between light and dark to be in the center of the illustration. That's problematic. It could be here or it could be here. I'm, I'm, I'm aiming more for here. So I think we should immediately address that. So let's just push that over. So we have at least like a two thirds kind of relationship, two thirds to one third. Um, this is like composition 101. I, I've got some uh, some master classes you can watch back on composition. I, I really recommend those for anybody who's ever struggling with that stuff because I just go over some basic, basic, basic stuff. Like stuff that is just so good to know. Stuff that'll that'll keep you from like making some 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 really kind of easy to make mistakes, but that are really easy to avo easy to avoid as well as once you know what you're doing, you know. Um, and I don't want people to make those mistakes because it's the kind of thing you want to skip right over. You just want to say, I, I know I'm not going to make that mistake again, you know. So, and then you don't, and that's awesome. Bear with me here. I'm just uh, playing around again. Just trying to get something interesting happening back there. Um, we haven't used the Vincent brush. This is a really nice impressionistic brush. You see what it's doing there. Really lovely. Um, great for imp if you want to do like paintings that look like Van Gogh. I mean, it's named after our friend Vincent Van Gogh. That's going to be your friend, you're gonna enjoy using that brush, I promise. 
we go a long way with that one. All right, so let's take a look at what we got here. So now we're just begging for a shape right here to work with what we have going on here. This is all, I think, pretty okay. We'll flip it back. And I think we're in good shape there. We still haven't gone full to white for our contrast. Maybe we'll save that for the last little bit. Um, stretch the eye shape. Uh, every time, let's see, I've had the USB cable go on one. I haven't had that happen. This is sort of like the vampire from Midnight Mass. What's that? Is that a movie, Bliss? Ah, don't know it. Meshed with the old-fashioned vampire from the black and whites. So yeah, like the Nosferatu uh, character, right? I like it. I like it. Okay, so moving on. Let's go ahead and get a little bit lighter over here when we, because we're gonna pop that church silhouette against it. But um, actually, you know what? First, I want to get that church designed. So let's design it for real. Um, I'm gonna use the uh, the soft the concept brush here for this. This is sort of our diagonal that we're following right here. So. Actually, I want to go a little, a little thinner than that, I think. Sort of want to get up that direction. And I'm looking for it to be having an extra little roof right there. There we go. Something like this. I think that might do what we need to do. And then maybe like up here, we could have some bats flying from behind and swooping up this way. That might be kind of cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the lasso tool. I don't know if this is the best idea might make it too sharp, um, but let's just try it. So I'm gonna go here, and here. And, uh, and down, and across, okay. And then here we're just gonna go up, down, and up, and across, and over. And while I've got that selected, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna use black and I'm gonna use the um, couple things. First, that pigmentia, just gonna size that up and knock in some stuff right there. Then go for that vortex, use a lighter color. And just kind of mess around in there a bit so it's not perfect. Go a little darker towards the top where I want us to draw the eye up. And then um, take that uh, ratchet brush, go for a lighter color, and add some, some spattery goodness there. And yeah, I like that shape. So while I have that, I'll go invert the selection, come over here and just get rid of some of those pencil lines that I was using a moment ago to sort of figure it all out. Easy peasy. Use that claw brush and just knock it down and do some cool stuff around the edge there. Like that. Also remember, flow. Reduce that flow. 
and you're going to get different effects. Okay, so I'm using that same brush, but I'm going to kind of come back in and do this kind of stuff. And now I can use that Pigmentia edge brush to just soften all of that. Maintain the contrast up there around the um, the highest point, the steeple there, right? We want to make sure that reads clearly, like so. Now you can do stuff like this. You can like you grab a giant brush, okay? Um, I could take that. Uh, let's see what do we have here. Something like maybe the box it brush and knock back the flow a little bit. Grab this color and just just stamp up stamp on top of it a few times like that. Okay, so we still we can still read that. Um, actually, I don't want to. I want to on the steeple. I want that to be extra clear. So I'm just going to do it like further down like this. There we go. And maybe I want to soften what's happening in that top right corner. You know, a cool thing to do right there would be to do something like suggest a window or something. Maybe, you know, you might, you might do something like that. You might say, oh, there's a window up there, you know. Still trying to keep that diagonal going, basically. Let's go straight all the way to black up there in that corner. Too much, too much there. I messed up that, but I, I could use my smudge tool and just smudge that together and then paint over it with something like that um, pigmentia again, right? If I feel like, uh-oh, went too dark. You gotta watch this stuff. It's one thing too, I'll tell you, when you're working in a room like I am, where the lighting is just... You know, I've got light in my face for the show, and I've got a light to light up the room, and I've got... It's hard to see my values very clearly in my Cintiq, so my advice is whenever you're doing this kind of stuff for real, make sure um, you can really see clearly. Okay. Because a lot of times what you'll do is you'll be drawing something and it'll look okay in the lighting conditions you have, but you won't be able to see the full range of values. And then you get stuck, you look at it later and you go, oh my gosh, that's way darker than I realized, or that's way lighter, you know, um, that kind of thing. You don't want to get stuck like that. Trouble. Hey, let's grab um, that concept pencil again and just go ahead and knock in these, this window here. I think like that could be a good little detail. I don't know. Eh, maybe not. I'm not really feeling it. But you got to try stuff to see if it works or not. That's the rule of the game. So I might, I might leave some of that in there just to kind of have some cool shapes, but. Not so sure if that worked. <coughs> Excuse me. You can also do this kind of stuff. You can go, hey, you know what? Just to get this ear to read a bit more and to sort of clarify this side of the art you know you can do stuff like that and just knock a little lighter shape in there and then soften around it it's all about deciding where you want something to be like th there to be an edge 
where you're very clearly describing something to your audience, you know? You're saying this is a shape you should pay attention to, you know, or not. Um, and some, this is the kind of stuff, the decision making that goes into illustrating, right? I mean, we have a very limited amount of time together here, gang. Um, an hour is not a long time to get something done. But even in just that short amount of time, you can do quite a bit of damage, right? You can really get quite a bit done. If you're thinking up front about these little fundamental things, you know, and I hope that's what these little illustration masterclasses do for you all is help you to to do that kind of stuff to think about that see like pop a little window in there and that gives us a little something to define this a little more clearly right all right we're gonna stop there because um I really want to do something quickly for you all before we end the show, which is just run through some of the brushes that we didn't cover. So we're going to do um, a quick little demo of that. All right. So let's do this. So we have looked at a lot of these Brit pen. Just want to show you guys this because it's so fun. Um, those of you who liked ink, this one was for me uh, a really good one to design inspired by a lot of the people I like the uh, English um, pen and ink artists from 1960s through, I would say, like the late 80s, around that area. Um, you've seen that smooth hatch brush. Double edge has one edge that's hard and one edge that's soft, see? So depending on which way you use it, you're gonna get some nice stuff going on there. Concept pencil, it is what it is, it's a pencil. The concept pencil soft is really lovely to sketch with and draw with, and um, it's also good at emulating sort of the uh, China marker kind of pencil, you know? Ratchet, we looked at what that does. Um, this is one of my new favorites for building up texture and just doing cool stuff. It's a beauty. Uh, wonky brush, look at this weirdo. I don't even know what to do with this thing. It's just fun. And if you use it with other colors, okay, it's got some color dynamics baked in. So check this out, whoa, see what I mean? Um, wonky variant, similar, but different. Then you have your inky wonk. Inky Wonk is another really nice drawing tool, similar to the BlotBot brushes, but it's got its own thing going on. And I highly recommend you try it. There's a tight one uh, where the, the, the bumps are closer together and not quite as exaggerated. You got the claw brush. I love using this for just directional textural uh, work, okay? And then you have a variation of it that has this texture built into it, which is really fun. Uh, let's check out the egg brushes. These are great for drawing. Look at that. Woohoo! And there's a variant of it as well. Okay. Uh, try them both. The variant's going to give you finer lines when you want them. Okay, so it's got more of a range right there to play with. Um, Pigmentia, we looked at these. Okay, we was using them just a moment ago in our vampire painting. The edge one is its own thing going on. Okay see that's quite different uh, let's check out the vortex brush well look at that Woo! vortex I like to do some positive and negative stuff with that one good for like smoke and cloud effects and magical stuff there's a variant of that as well okay it's got a lot more texture but you can still go black with it if you want to full opaque uh, power spatter oh my gosh well look at that it's power spatter follows the tilt of your pen, okay? So keep that in mind. You can tilt up and spatter that way. You can tilt off to the side. A lot of variation in the spatter pattern there. The zig ink is something unlike anything else I've ever made. It's got this cool zigzaggy kind of thing going on. So I really like it. It's fun to draw with. Uh, then you got your Vincent. We talked about that, the Vincent Van Gogh brush. Check out what happens when you use that with some color. Nice, subtle um, color variation there. Responds to pen tilt as well as pressure, so very nice. Express Ink is a really lovely inking brush. 
you can see here, okay? It's got a sort of a brushy ink kind of a feel to it. Um, we're almost there, gang. Ripolo, woo! This is that coffee mug kind of, set your coffee mug down and make a stain with it. Circles, similar deal, but you get to do these actual brush strokes with it and the circles are contained within the stroke. That one is pretty darn cool. Box it, we looked at this one. Don't forget to play with the flow for this brush as well. Okay, so you can get some different kinds of shapes going on. Last but not least, we have Inky, as mentioned earlier in the chat. This is a really nice standard digital inking tool that'll give you your thick to thin, it'll give you some texture and everything in between. Use this one to your heart's content um, for every little inking job that you have. You're gonna love it. It's a good one for that kind of stuff. Folks, there you go. It is time. I gotta say ciao for now. Thank you so much for hanging out. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Be kind. Have a great weekend. See you next time.